Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning, I'm Jeff Kellum. Welcome to this week's edition of Encounter. Today I'm going to tell you where to go. I'm the uh, parish associate at the Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church USA. And during this time of uh, political upset, um, this pandemic, a lot of people are just fatigued. And so there are a lot of ideas about how to cope. One of them is to learn a new language. Well, terrific. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go that I would actually use it. Vestal, um, Hillcrest, I don't know. Um, my wife is learning to play recorder again, so she's taking up a new musical instrument. So, but what about taking a hike or getting out into the natural environment around us, breathing in some fresh air and uh, discovering new places and going, you know, you're outside, it's pretty safe. So today I'm going to tell you where to go. The Waterman Conservation Centers would be one opportunity to get out and enjoy the beauty of our creation. Um, my wife and I do the, the IBM Glen. We've done the Waterman Conservation uh, Center in, uh, in Appalachian. And there are some other places, too, that our guest will tell us about. Um, Christopher Audette, you are the, uh, the executive director, and we're sitting here in the museum. Tell us a little bit about this space. Let's start here. Well, sure. It's. Um... Well, first off, it's my pleasure to be on the program, and, and it's uh, a unique privilege to uh, professionally be able to tell people to take a hike. Uh, you'll tell us where to go, and I'll tell you to take a okay, hike. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, we're, we're seated, seated in uh, our what we call our museum. It's a, kind of a take on a, a natural history museum. We, we try to focus on uh, native species, things that you can find around here, but uh, our collection is diverse. Uh, it comes from, from many different sources, many different donors. So we have some kind of special things. You know, we have a pronghorn antelope and, and we have an American bison. Uh, we don't have many of them roaming the woods here on right. Hilton Road. The, uh, the center is um, centered in Appalachian. Um, tell me the, the address. Yep. Uh, we're located at 403 Hilton Road. And it's in Appalachian. Just off 434. Yeah. Uh, yep. But this is not the only uh, part of the Waterman Center. There are other properties, and I want to talk about each one as, as we go. Well, Waterman, you know something about the Waterman legacy, so tell me about uh, that. Well, yeah, it's uh, you know, people know uh, names like um, you know, Muir and, and Thoreau and um, you know, notable conservationists, but people ask me, well, why are you called Waterman? Uh, it comes from our founding member and, and benefactor, Lolita Waterman, uh, who donated this property, you know, the, these initial 86 acres that became our first preserve and our first system of trails. Uh, and she stipulated that it be named in honor of her late husband, uh, Fred L. Waterman, uh, who was the last horse-mounted state trooper in uh, the state of New York. So that's, this is the original property. That's correct. And through the years, you have um, uh, been given uh, other properties, including Hiawatha Island. Yeah, that's correct. Um, the we... IBM Glen is part of uh, the Waterman Center. And tell me about the others. And then we'll get back to the other. Yeah, sure. Um, through this first property and, and through you know, feverish outreach and, and lots and lots of hard work, uh, the, the early um, actually started out as the Tioga Conservation Education Center. Um, built a good name for land conservation. We did a good job out here once we became watermen. Right. Uh, so people just started, uh, not quite but throwing land at us. We made a good name and people wanted to trust us with the land. Yeah. Um, we're not quite a land trust, 
you know, we really focus on um, promoting outdoor recreation and, and utilization appreciation for these, these wonderful wild lands. Um, but currently the network of preserves uh, that are encompassed under the Waterman name are, uh, will go moving east to west, right. or rather west to east, <laughs> uh, with uh, Brick Pond in Owego, just a stone's throw from the village. Right. Um, the Appalachian Marsh, Hiawatha Island, as you mentioned. Um, I should clarify, the Appalachian Marsh is, um, it's that kind of wetland area that you, you notice where uh, the east and westbound lanes of Route 17 diverge. Yes. And you say, gee, I wonder why they did that, you know, so that they didn't have to build a, a highway straight through a vital wetland. Right. There's this property, um, 403 Hilton Road, our, our main interpretive site, the IBM Glen, and then our newest property is called the Pettis Hill Preserve, and that's in West Windsor. It's a property that was willed to us, hmm. uh, and we're actively working on developing that now. We have a, a great group of volunteers out in Windsor that, that help us with that. Right. Um, I guess I'd forgotten about the Brick Pond. I drive by it all the time, and uh, we, have, we have hiked around it when it's been drier weather. Um, and we've, we've looked at the uh, lily pads that cover it during the summer. And it's, that's one of those areas that is just left, right? I mean, there's no development there. Um, there is a little bridge and a couple of places to sit down and look, but you don't, you don't go in and maintain it. It's, it's we, uh, we maintain it, but we, we make our best efforts to leave it as natural appearing as, as possible. Um, the first and foremost, the, the property is for wildlife. Yeah. Um, but you know, we clear the trails. We we try to maintain the the markings so that it's easy to get around. Uh, we we include walkways when we can. Uh, there there used to be a beautiful floating bridge going across the pond that uh, unfortunately was destroyed in one of the major floods. Right. Um, that's been replaced by earthen. Uh, earthen berms uh, and, and water level control devices so we can uh, try to manage it as the, the productive wetland that it should be. Mm. Um, we took an organized hike around it. Are, are there organized hikes still? Uh, we haven't offered uh, many recently, but yeah, we, we offer uh, guided hikes uh, mm. with our, our volunteer naturalists, yeah. One program that we do offer or have offered recently at Brick Pond is through our Natural History Through the Lens uh, Photography Workshop Series, where wildlife photographers guide you uh, through our preserves, uh, teach you how to use that camera that's been sitting in your closet for years, um, to take compelling images of, of uh, natural scenes and wildlife, and also learn how to interpret those scenes and talk about what that subject is. Um, and that's enhanced by a new photography blind at Brick Pond um, that was built through a, a partnership with an organization that's now known as uh, Collins Aerospace. Now here, um, we have, uh, we've, I guess we've not snowshoed, but it used to be that you could snowshoe and, uh, and cross-country ski. Um, and we, we have hiked through some of the snow and we've hiked at other times of the year. Um, so we've described the museum. What else is, is here at the Waterman Center in Appalachian? Well, I certainly urge people to not discount us during, during the snowy times, you know, during the winter months. Uh, the, the trails don't disappear. We are still open. Uh, it's one of my favorite times to be in the woods. Uh, after a fresh snow, it is majestic. Oh, yeah. um, and we rent cross-country <laughs> cross skis and snowshoes yeah. uh, right out of the Interpretive Center. Uh, we're open Monday through Friday and Saturdays um, during the week 9 to 4 and uh, on Saturday 10 to 4. Yeah. So that's the boots, the skis. Yeah, everything yep. you need. Wonderful. That's great. And then um, during, this, uh, during the summer, and maybe you have nature programs during the winter too, but I know that during the summer there are a lot of things going on. It's a pretty, a bit, pretty busy place. Yeah, we have summer youth programs, including a summer camp. Uh, we have guided hikes. Uh, usually at the IBM Glen, there, we have a program that we call Glen Walks um, right. with uh, 
you know, accomplished naturalists, even a, a professor from uh, Binghamton University, Dr. Julian Shepard, usually will lead one. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, um, as a kid, I remember going through the IBM Glen. As an IBM family, uh, we yes. would go and hike, hike through the Glen, and uh, even now, uh, and it's wonderful, you know, you meet people along the way that you don't know, but you have it in common. And there is a sense of, of community when, when you meet folks along the, the path. Oh, that's, that's what Waterman is all about, is community, about, you know, a, a family. Yeah. You know, the, the woods don't care uh, what your political affiliation is. You know, the, 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 the deer that run through the woods don't care who you voted for. Yeah. Um, this is a place that uh, is all welcoming, where we can come and in safety, relax, find some solace, and, uh, and, and find community. Right. The um, other thing that strikes me about all of, the, all of them is that there's a sense of stewardship of the environment. You know, it, it, it does build community among the human beings who are there, but we also know there's wildlife there. And we also know that just the trees, the flora, the fauna, even the weeds. Uh, I, I had a, a friend back in uh, Virginia who talked about weeds as being, you know, we call them weeds, but they're really wildflowers uh, often and have great value that we discount. And then he used the analogy of discounting people in the same way that we sometimes discount weeds. Uh, but there's beauty in, in that part of creation. Uh, Hiawatha I Island. Now this is not as accessible as the other properties. That's true. It's, there's a, a little bit of dynamic tension with, uh, with Hiawatha Island. There's a, a document governing how we manage that resource. Uh, it's called a conservation easement. Um, in it, it mandates that we provide open access uh, you know, 365 days a year to the public. However, a bridge can never be built. Oh, yeah. um, and you know, a bridge spanning that, that river at that spot, it would be difficult to maintain. Yeah. Um, one of the ways we maintain access to the island is every year we throw a, a Father's Day breakfast fundraiser. Uh, where we use a boat and, and ferry people over to the island and they get a tour and uh, a, a rustic country breakfast and it's a wonderful event. Um, we will see how uh, guidelines evolve over the next couple of months and hopefully we can resume that this year, if not certainly in 2022. Yeah. Maybe you have to downsize the number of people on the boat, make more trips or something. But it it's yeah, we we've considered that it's it, it's hard on on you know a boat by nature is uh, quite a cramped space and yeah. it is outside. There's some mitigation there, but yeah, we we have yeah. to consider. Right, have to be safe. Yeah. The um, other properties. Now you mentioned that. What's the newest one? The Pettis Hill Preserve. Yeah. What's what's there? Where Pettis Hill is in Windsor. Yep, it's in West Windsor. Uh, you take the exit with the McDonald's, <laughs> you turn right, it's, um, eventually you get to Abbey Road. Uh, and it's, it's quite a uh, rural setting. Um, if anybody's familiar with uh, the Schoolhouse Creamery, it's not far from there. Okay. Um, on an aside, I encourage everybody to become familiar with Schoolhouse Creamery. <laughs> right. They're fantastic right. <laughs> um, and a very good neighbor. But. Uh, it's a, it's a gorgeous woodland. Um, the current trail gently slopes up to um, what we refer to as uh, Chuck's Pyramid. Um, now, Chuck Pettis uh, was uh, a great benefactor to Waterman, uh, a wonderful community figure. Uh, he, he used to operate um, a roller rink, I think, called Roller Dome. Um, which was a, a youth fixture in, in the 80s and 90s. Um, he was an engineer at IBM, uh, avid hiker, uh, horticulturalist. I think he played clarinet. Uh, and um, yeah, a, a great friend yeah, of the community. Yeah, an all-around rena renaissance yeah. guy. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and, and Chuck made very certain that his land out in Windsor uh, was going to benefit the community in perpetuity. Yeah. 
and 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 we're the organization that's that's honored with that task and it's it's fantastic wonderful um you, our guest today on encounter is christopher audette he is the uh, executive director of the waterman conservation centers um how did you get involved in this? What was your life journey that led you to um, being in the perfect job? The absolute perfect job that, that allows me to uh, uh, walk through the woods on a regular basis professionally, um, to uh, you know, operate a boat, uh, to, to meet all kinds of wonderful people. Um, it was kind of a cir circuitous route. Yeah. Um, my wife grew up in Vestal. Um, that's what brings me to this specific geographic region. Um, but I studied biology and natural history at Paul Smith's College. Um, I, I specialized in aquatic ecology, so I'm, I'm most at home on the river and, and in the marsh and, and at Brick Pond. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, I got into the nonprofit sector through uh, first Peace Corps service and then service with uh, private nonprofits uh, in sub Saharan Africa, the countries of Zambia and Malawi. Wow, uh, well traveled then. Yeah. And not just the geography, but the peoples, the cultures. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, places change, cultures change, but um, I found people as a whole are, are all incredibly similar. Yeah. Especially children. Yes. You know, I, I see um, video on the news of, or of something in, uh, of refugee camps. And kids have uh, as much suffering as we see there. There's still the sense of play that these kids naturally develop. And um, you, you've seen it firsthand as you've been to Africa. And, you know, bringing us back now to the Waterman Centers, the, the programs for youth in, in the summers. The, the concept of play is so important, and, and, and that's really what we foster in our youth programs here is, is exploration and play and, and, and learning through that. Um, it, it translated the other direction for me as well, and you know, when, when I was learning uh, local languages, it was through playing with the, the, the neighborhood children that would come and visit us wow. that we developed our, our, our language. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's not all play because there are some serious issues that face the environment. And that certainly is one of the things that you teach here, but you also are involved in with a hands-on um, the, the issues of um, the trees that were cut down, for example, at the IBM Glen. Um, nobody wanted to see those trees go, but tell me what precipitated that? Absolutely. Well, our, our, our role in the community, our aim is, of course, to inspire people to conserve the environment. Uh, but it's also to do that direct management. And, and unfortunately, sometimes we have to educate people about problems. Yeah. Um, probably the single greatest issue that we're dealing with as a, a conservation agency uh, right now are invasive species. Uh, the, the one that caused all the tree removal at the Glen and, and, and that kind of loss uh, is called the emerald ash borer. So for the most part, all the trees that you, you see lying freshly cut uh, along the trails at the IBM Glen are uh, ash trees. Uh, one of the most common species in this region. Uh, it's a beautiful hardwood. You know, we planted a lot of them in our yards for shade trees because they, they grew rapidly. Um, their seeds are an abundant food source for wildlife. Um, it's really a shame to see them go. Um, but we've actively cut them anywhere close enough to the trail that they could be a risk uh, to a hiker. Right. That's our main concern is safety. Um, everywhere else you know, in, in, in the you know, 200 acres at the IBM Glen where there's an ash tree and, and there's a lot of them, uh, nature will take its course and you know those trees of course will decompose and, and return nutrients to the soil um, the the standing wood will be host for all kinds of insects and, and fungi um, that in turn will be food for other animals uh, 
I, I expect a uh, substantial boom in the woodpecker population because of the emerald ash borer. Right. My son would be uh, glad to hear that as an yes, ornithologist yes. whose specialty is, is woodpeckers. The, uh, um, the expense involved in this, I mean, that, that becomes a budget issue for you and a challenge. Uh, you're not cutting down trees yourself. You have to bring somebody in. You have uh, folks who are maintaining the up other properties as well. So what's the budget look like, especially in, in a time of pandemic when you can't have the fundraisers that you, you once had? Well, that's a serious concern. Um, in the case of the uh, IBM Glen and the ash trees there, we were fortunate enough to um, uh, have services essentially donated by, by Cook's Tree Service. Mm -hmm. Um, they were incredibly generous, incredibly helpful, and, and boy, did they work hard. Um, they did remove a few logs to, to cover some of the, the overhead expenses, uh, but for the most part, we, we left the trees for nature to take its course. Unfortunately, uh, there's another insect pest that's uh, plaguing our forests in this area, and, and not just at Waterman Properties. I, I, I need to stress this that these are issues in your backyard um, uh, all across the, the, the Northeast and across the country. Yeah. Um, the other insect is called the hemlock woolly adelgid. Um, and your, your viewers may remember that we made a big push this past spring um, to call for donations to fund uh, protective chemical treatments for old growth hemlocks at the IBM Glen uh, against the adelgid. Um, and that was a tremendous success. So the, to answer your question, um, when we do have to fund directly uh, efforts like this that are urgent and important, um, generally it's an appeal for donations and the community really came through. I want to thank everybody that donated to that campaign um, because it was a resounding success. Those, those trees have been protected for the next five years. Good. On the other hand, uh, here we go again at the Hilton Road Preserve here, our main interpretive property. Uh, for some reason, uh, over the, the past five to seven years, uh, we've noticed the adelgid on our hemlock trees here. We have a large hemlock forest um, just, just out to the west, uh, going along our gorge uh, that, that you've walked. Um, and it's an important character to that landscape. It's very important in terms of holding the soil so it doesn't wash down into the gorge. Um, for, for some very fortunate reason, uh, the adelgid hasn't caused much damage over the past seven years. Flash forward to right now, uh, and as we go out and we examine our trees, every single tree is covered with adelgid. Um, there's, if we don't act this spring, uh, there's going to be a wholesale loss. Uh, that whole forest will die. Yeah. Uh, and think of all those trees cut, uh, the ash trees cut at the IBM Glen, and, um, multiply and, and multiply it by all the hemlocks. And these are trees that are 400 years old. Talk about a loss. Yes. Um, so we're, we're in the middle of another appeal. Um, you, you saw me placing flyers on cars in the parking lot when you arrived. Um, we're, we're urgently trying to raise money for the, the Hilton Road hemlocks. Right. Um, and the fact that there are cars in the parking lot um, here on a Friday when we're recording this, this interview on a cloudy, overcast, wintry day uh, with still lots of snow on the ground, there are people participating in these activities Yes. All the time. Yes. Yep. yep. Year round, especially during the pandemic, people have have felt a pull. Um, you know, part of it is is kind of you know, pandemic cabin fever. Uh, you yeah. need to get out of the house. Um, but I, I sincerely think part of it is we are drawn to nature. Yes. There's healing here. Um, you know, there's. There, there's wellness and, and a sense of well-being and excitement, and, and it's something that you can get out and do, and do it now. Um, and that's so powerful. Uh, the, the IBM Glen has, uh, goodness, almost resembled Disney World. 
uh, especially during the months of April and May, uh, there were times I was concerned I would have to limit visitorship there uh, because even though people were outside, I was concerned that people were too close. Oh, right. right. Um, thankfully, we never hit that flashpoint. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's, it's incredibly important. The work that we do, uh, not to sound conceited, <laughs> is, is vital. Be proud uh, of it, yeah. yeah. And we're, cre- we're incredibly proud. We always uh, get toward the end of the program, and it dawns on me that we should tell people about a website so that people yes. can find out more information about the, the six or seven properties, right? Uh, six properties six. now. Yep. Maybe number seven will be my backyard or something. You never know. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk but, donations okay, uh, yeah. after we cut. Okay. Well, tell me about the website. Um, it's just www.watermancenter.org. Right. Um, simple to remember, simple to type. Um, or just Google Waterman, Waterman Center. Uh, we, we come up pretty high in the, the results. Uh, lots of information there and uh, avenues to donate. Um, it occurs to me too that we may have done some geocaching here. Oh yeah, I, boy, I'm sorry I forgot. Uh, at multiple Waterman sites there are, are, are caches. Yeah. Uh, here at Hilton Road there are several. Uh, there are new caches at the Pettis Hill Preserve. We actively uh, promoted that activity there actually during the, the grand opening. Huh. Um, we, we partner with 4-H to, to, to do that kind of activity. Uh, and I'm always hearing about caches at other preserves. So right. it's, it, it is permitted, uh, it's, it's encouraged. It's a great activity. It helps get people out of the house. That's great. Well, uh, thank you very much for welcoming us here. And um, um, I- We encourage you to go to the website to find out more information about how you can volunteer, because I'm sure that there's a need for volunteers. Oh yeah, we we didn't even cover that, but 90% of our maintenance activities are are done by volunteers. Uh, If you're looking for for a way to to get out and and contribute and get some wonderful exercise, uh, I'm actively recruiting uh, what we call trail stewards. Uh, thank you again to Christopher Audet, who is our, the executive director of the Waterman Conservation Centers and the, the six properties associated with the center. Um, I'm Jeff Kellum. Thank you for being with us on the Encounter Program, produced in cooperation with the Broome County Council of Churches. I hope that in the coming week, you will be gentle with people and with yourself. Mm-hmm.